Hey guys, welcome to my first video tutorial. I'm going to be working through the quiz, the quiz that you guys took, or the pop learning assessment that you guys took on Friday. And I'm going to be going through this information so that you can go back and watch this video. If you're having problems with the material or if maybe you didn't do, well, do too well on that, I want you to watch this so that you can make sure you understand the material. Uh, I got this information, or I got how to do make these kinds of videos from Mr. Walker. Uh, and he knows a lot more fancier stuff, so it may be a little bit rough. Bear with me. I'm hoping that you're able to follow along with me. He usually has a camera up in the corner, so I'll go ahead and put that in there. So there I am up in the corner. So looking at this first problem and looking at this quiz, the main thing that was covered was the idea of velocity. And velocity is very important to physicists because it tells us where an object was going and how long it took to get there. And what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks is that our velocity equals a change in displacement over a change in time. With this displacement idea being this displacement idea being the idea of how far it's changed from its origin. And when we say origin, we're just talking about like a home base. We're talking about where the object started. So if we were talking about how uh, how much displacement you move in a day or how far you move, your origin may be your bed. Uh, if it was a race, if it was a foot race, we may be looking at the origin as the starting line. It's really how far the object has moved away from its location. And as this, we look at this change in time, we're talking about how long it took for the object to get there. So when we look at the idea of velocity equaling a change in displacement over a change in time, we need two pieces of material or two pieces of information. We need the change in displacement over the change in time. So when we're looking at number one, where it says, what is the object's average velocity? We're looking at its final, like its total change in displacement over its total change in time. Now, a total change in displacement, it doesn't matter how far we go, because if we remember, displacement just means the amount of meters or the amount of inches or the amount of centimeters from the starting location to the end location, uh, drawn in a straight line. So for this object, we just have to look at where it ended up at the end. And we can see that by making a little line that its final displacement was three meters. When we look at this object's total change in time, we can see that in all, this object moved for seven seconds. So if we we're writing this as an ordered pair, we would have it as a mark of seven comma three, meaning that our X value, our time equals seven seconds and our y value, our position, or how, where we are in relation to our origin is three. So on number one right here, when we had our velocity equals our change in displacement over our change in time, we had that equal to three, that being our change in position or our displacement, meters over our change in time, which was seven seconds. Now, usually we would have to have a direction at this point, but because this is only one dimensional motion, meaning that it's pretty much just a line that our little object is moving forward and backward on, we know that any positive motion, meaning this being a positive three, means we're, we're heading this way, whatever direction that may be. So our correct answer for this one was three meters over seven seconds, because this is our average velocity. It's how far our object has moved in total. Now, on number two, it introduces this idea, and let me go ahead and erase my board up here. It introduces this idea of instantaneous velocity. So when we talk about instantaneous velocity, let me see if I can make this a little bigger for us. We're talking about an object's uh, velocity at a certain snapshot of either time or position, depending on how it's being asked. So this one says, instantaneous velocity between five and seven seconds. So what this means is we are looking at the object's velocity only in the small segment of time. So looking up at our graph, our instantaneous velocity is going to be the change in displacement over the change in time in this small segment. So we can see that initially at five seconds, this object had a displacement or a position of two. It was two meters away from its quote unquote origin point, its home. And we can see that at seven, it had a displacement of three. 
So when we look at velocity being a change of displacement over a change of time, between these two small segments, it went one meter. It went from two to three. So our change in displacement is going to be one meter. Our change in time is from five to seven seconds. So from five to seven seconds, that's a change of two seconds. So we can do the math here and know that it's 0.5 meters per second. Or on this quiz, I said you could leave it as a fraction. So one meter uh, over two seconds, meaning that in two seconds from five to seven seconds, our object, whatever it was, whether it be Jeff the turtle or a kid walking away from his bed, our displacement was that one meter. Now, as we move into number three, this is a different type of graph. This is not a position time graph. This is a velocity time graph. And our y-axis over here is giving us the velocity instead of the displacement or the position. So knowing this graph and looking at this graph, we realize that these marks right here are not telling us the position of the object. They are telling us the velocity in which it was moving. So as we graph this, we have to know in the back of our minds that these little pink lines are telling us the velocity of our object instead of the position of our object. So a lot of you on this one just tried to kind of connect the dots and be like, oh, this is its position. But that's not true. Uh, what we wanted to do in this one is we wanted to show uh, and use what we know about velocity to graph the position of the object. So we're gonna go ahead and start at the origin right here. And we know that for the first second on this graph, by looking at this little pink line right here, we know that the object's velocity for the first second was negative two meters per second. So that means because it's meters per second, negative two meters per second, that in the first second, it would have gone, and let me see if I can get a ruler here. I don't believe so, we'll just freehand it for now. It would have gone, down two seconds or two meters excuse me it would have gone down two meters because its velocity is negative two meters per second this object in the first second would have traveled two meters in the negative direction away from the origin now when we look at our next second we have a velocity of negative one meters per second because for the entirety of the second we can see that its velocity was equal to negative one so this line right here is going to go down one meter in one second. So it's going to look something like that. Now for the next segment, we see that our velocity is equal to zero, our y value equals zero. So this line right here, our object stopped changing position. It moved zero meters for that one second. For our next segment, it had a velocity of one meter a second. So it's going to go up one meter in that one second. For the next segment right here, we see that it had a y value of two, so that means in one second, one second, it moved two meters. So it's gonna go back up to here. And then finally, for our, our last little segment right up here, it's traveling three meters in one second. So it's gonna go one, two, three meters in that one second. And I'm gonna change colors for the line because it's starting to get a little bit busy on here. So there, 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 there. Now, the object for the next section right here, for this section right here, it still has a positive velocity. Its velocity decreased, but it still has a positive velocity, and that velocity equals one. So for the next two seconds, it's moving at a rate or a velocity of one meter per second. So right now it's at a position of um, it's at a position of three meters, and we can see that by reading our red line. And it's going to go for two seconds. It's going to go up one meter a second. So it's going to go, it's going to look something like
this right here. For the next section, it's going at a velocity of negative one meter a second. So it's going to, for the next two seconds, go back down to here. For the next little segment right here, excuse me, wrong color, right here, it's going one meter a second. So it's going to go up a little bit, just like that. And then for the last segment, it has the velocity of zero, so it's gonna go straight across. So this is roughly what our, in the red, the red shows the position of our object given the velocities. In this problem up here, we just had position. In this problem down here, we were given the velocity, we had to find the position. Looking at this graph, and I'm answering number three, I skipped it before, but at what times did the object have the least amount of velocity? The answer is going to be the times in which the velocity, and I'll do it in blue, in which the velocity equaled zero. So between, between two and three seconds and between 11 and 12 seconds. Now, for this one right here, the key parts that some of us missed is that it tells us graph the object below with a position versus time graph. So we are given the velocities of the object. We were told the object has a velocity of four meters per second for one second. It then stops for three seconds. The object has a velocity of negative 0.5 meters per second for five seconds. Graph the object below with a position time graph. So, once again, we're going to say that the object starts, and I'll use yellow, we're going to say the object starts at the origin. It starts at its position equals zero. And when we're looking at this point, when we're looking at our little yellow point, we can see that the position equals zero, it's at the origin, and our time equals zero. No time has passed yet. So we read, has a ver the object has a velocity of four meters every second for one second. So for the first one second, it's gonna go four meters. So our Y value is going to increase by four and our time is going to increase by one second. So it's going to look like that and we're gonna pretend that's a straight line. Now it tells us if it stops for three seconds. So. We know that if an object stops, it has zero velocity. It's not moving, it's sitting at the same position. So the position of this graph, the position the object is gonna stay at is four, and it's doing that for three seconds. So one, one, two, three, point right there. This flat line on a position time graph shows us that we have no velocity our velocity equals zero. On a position time graph, if you see a flat line, it means that the velocity equals zero. That is only true for a position time graph. A flat line on a velocity time graph, like these pink lines, it has velocity. Unless it's on the x-axis, the object has velocity. So looking at this now, it tells us the object then has a velocity of negative 0.5 meters per second for five seconds. So that means that for every one second that passes, it's gonna have a velocity of negative 0.5 meters per second, meaning that every second, it's going to move towards the origin half of a meter. So we go, we're at four seconds right now. So that means that at five seconds, it'll be about right there. At six seconds, it'll be about right here seven seconds we can see the line starting to form eight seconds like that and it's going to look something like that so the key parts of this lesson the things we need to take away is that when we're talking about the average velocity the average velocity of an object is its total displacement meaning we look at that final point our final point right here the total displacement, total change in displacement over the total change in time. 
Instantaneous velocity looks at a small snapshot of an object during two specific times that are given to you. A position time graph shows us the position of the object or where it is located to the ob or located to the origin over time and that a velocity time graph is graphing the velocity of the object, how fast it's moving over time.